Hi, uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I drew this. Uh, yay. So, um, I did a poll on Twitter and Instagram and asked you guys kind of how you wanted to see these Patreon videos. And uh, a lot of you guys were saying you would rather I do 30 minutes sped up and then I just do commentary over it for the most important points. So, uh, here we are. Here's the first one. Um, I don't know how much I'll be saying or how long of a silence there's going to be. I figured that this is kind of going to be a Bob Ross style, like that. there's not going to be music blaring in the background. But, you know, if you have your own music, you want to blast it, go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm just going to be kind of explaining my, my art process here. So the two things I wanted to cover for this video in particular are going to be sketching and composition. Um, this one's also going to be on YouTube, just so people can kind of get an idea of kind of what goes on. But uh, if you are watching on YouTube, hello. Um, this is going to be kind of what I'm going to be doing every month, at least once. Uh, Patreon process videos, I'll kind of just run you through in a bit more detail what I'm doing. So probably not the most exciting, smash cutty, epic, exciting thing you've ever seen. But I guess the, the whole point of these is kind of to be more informative anyway. So, you know, now now that I've spent the first <laughs> the first minute and a half not telling you anything about what I'm doing, uh, let, let's tell you a little bit about what I'm doing. So I'm drawing Rebecca from Cyberpunk, uh, Edge Runners. It's an anime that came out recently, but if you're watching this, it's been out for a little bit. But, um, bleh, sorry, the, the main idea that I have in mind for this is um, she's at the bar. She's drinking the David Martinez drink. Um, I don't know if anybody knows about that Easter egg in the game. But there's a bar you can go to. There's drinks named after different legends. And David Martinez, which is the main character from the game, is in that. Um, so I decided to include that as a little Easter egg. So, you know, uh, if you watch this video, whether it's here or on Patreon, then cool. You'll know. You'll be like, hey, I, I get the Easter eggs. Um, and then for everybody else, they'll be like, yeah, that kid liked to sip the alcohol. <laughs> um, so, yeah, hopefully I can mention a couple of things that'll be useful and helpful. Um, what I'm actually doing here with the drawing, I'm sure you've noticed that I've already kind of got my rough sketch in. Um, Usually what I'll do with the drawing at the very beginning is I don't actually focus on detail or making it look right. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm trying to fill up space in an interesting way. Most of the time my canvases are 12 by 18 inches. And, you know, if I draw the character in a really tiny corner, there's going to be a lot of extra room that's going to make the drawing feel really flat. So the first thing that I try to do with the composition uh, is try to figure out an interesting way to fill the canvas. You know, if it's one image, how can I fill as much of it as possible? How do I make that interesting? So what I actually do is I start with really big, blocky, clunky shapes, and then I try to figure out how to fill the canvas in an interesting way and try not to break the anatomy too much in the process. So at the beginning, this is very loose and you're going to see I mess around with stuff a lot. Like right now, I'm just tweaking the face and I will continue to mess with the face more later. But um, yeah, this is kind of just at the beginning, I have one layer for the super rough sketch. That's more just for positioning, knowing where I'm going to put stuff and not necessarily worrying about drawing it right. And then usually from there, I'll actually go ahead and make a new layer and start to refine things. So you'll see here's the head. I'm tweaking it. I'm transforming it. Um, I do actually have a bunch of references like just off to the side. So um, you don't see it on here, but I'm working on two screens. Technically, I have. OK, I have three screens, but two of them are art stuff. The third one, you know, is just like, oh, the music that's playing a uh, video that's playing in the background discord all of that kind of stuff so one's like my social media monitor the the other two were like the art ones so one's dedicated to like art references i also have a second window of this open so um if you go to window and then create new canvas and then you click on the thing it actually makes a double for your canvas that you can drag and move anywhere so it's kind of like a second navigator like you'll see in the top right you'll see it's like that but that's really useful just because if i'm zoomed in and working on details i will have a second preview window that's always zoomed out a hundred percent and i can actually see um you know up close and far away without needing to zoom in and out obnoxiously so i'll be like hey i'm working on this detail does it look right and i guess i guess the main 
thing that would be helpful with that would actually be to know, hey, I'm working on this part of the drawing and I hope it looks good, but in the context of the whole drawing, does it look right? You know, because with a lot of digital art, if you zoom in um, and you hyper fixate on a really small detail, that can look great when you're zoomed in at 10,000%. <laughs> But when you zoom out, you're like, oh, that doesn't that doesn't look so good. Um, so that's that's kind of why I do that. Uh, I think you'll see here. I actually stop moving. This is me thinking. So um, usually what I'll do in those moments is I'm trying to find more references. So you see, I stopped and then I started going back and drawing the hand. So I know that what I did there was, oh, uh, I need a reference of the hand. So I actually went and took a picture of my own hand. Uh, kind of trying to match the angle of this piece. So like I said, she's holding a drink. So I needed kind of a, this is a top down shot. Like you're looking kind of down on her. So I, I was just trying to figure that out using my hand as a reference. Like I said, reference is very important. Um, I guess I could talk about the kind of references I have. So I have a couple of screenshots from her in the game. I have a couple of screenshots of a couple of different poses. Cause this actually isn't my first take you know i i wish i could say oh hey i you know i wanted to draw this drew it one time got it perfect on my first try um <laughs> that's not the case usually what i'll do is i'll make a bunch of different thumbnails and stuff to try to figure out what would be best for the composition what's the most interesting idea um i'm really picky with the sketching stage just because i know that if a piece is going to take me 10 hours 20 hours <laughs> longer uh that type of deal i want it to be a good idea and i want the picture to look cool or be i want to convince myself it's a good idea and that i've explored every avenue before i jump straight into the rendering i know that that's probably really boring for some people they're like oh no i want to i want to color I, I want to add all the details you know but i feel like there's a lot of planning that goes into your piece even before you actually start the drawing like you see here i'm messing with it like oh hey is she holding up a gun is her hand just sitting down like what what are we doing with this second arm this is me just trying to figure out the composition i don't think it's a bad thing for you to not 100 percent understand it but i should have probably planned better but even with that being said even if you do have a plan i think it's good to be flexible if you have a better idea that comes along you know go with that instead that being said, I, I think that this is ta actually take like number 20. Like, <laughs> um, I'm not exaggerating when I say I had 20 different ideas for this piece. They range from, oh, her in a super badass pose, like where she has like shotguns and she's like shooting everything, her just like chilling. And then I, I figured, hey, instead of going with something big, spoopy and rambunctious, let, let's try to go with a bit more subtle, low key vibes on this one. It's like chill vibes. Um, with every piece, I usually try to have a little bit of a personal challenge involved. So um, for this one, it was just, hey, can I do like a top down angle and try to go for like a more scenic, not as loud action posy type of piece? You know, I was trying to go for subtlety, like create a mood, create a vibe. I'll let you know how it goes once the drawing is actually done, because at this point, it's actually not done yet. Um, you'll see there's a little bit of a skip here. That's because I'm... Um, dumb and I needed to I was doing my best to try to record the drawing but I was going to step away to go take a break from the drawing because I was like maybe if I come at it with a fresh eye and leave uh you know I got some food came back started drawing out of habit like I do and I was like wait you gotta record dude so uh I missed a little bit of the part where I draw the hair but there's an important lesson to be learned here uh if you see I'm actually coloring coloring I'm actually sketching in color um, I don't do this all the time. Usually for the pose, I will do that in black and white, just kind of like you're sketching with the pencil. But with a lot of details, especially technical details where volume is important, I will actually sketch with color instead, uh, just so I don't get lost in a mess of black lines because I sketch very messily, which is why messily? It's, 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 it's a word. If it's not a word, it is now. <laughs> We're just adding that to the dictionary. Um, you'll see that I'm coloring... And I'm sketching with color. The reason I do that is so I can see the volumes better. It won't be just the sea of black lines that get mixed up and is super hard to read. I actually see the volumes. I see the shapes. I actually can tell what I'm doing. And I'm like, oh, I know that if I were to color the hair, it's about this. If I do this or I do that, you know, I can actually see what I'm doing with the hair. You'll see that I flipped my canvas here just to make sure that it reads okay. 
on both sides. So I'm actually looking back and forth between two monitors right now to see the original flip and then the other flip. Um, flipping your canvas is a good thing, but sometimes if you fix it one way and then flip it again, you break it the other way. <laughs> so I usually will try to go back and forth between the two. I'll see it one way, see it the other way and try to find a good in between something that kind of works with both image orientations. Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of canvas flipping before. It's just a really good way of being like, oh, hey, this drawing, I thought it looked right, but now it looks super wonky to me. Um, and this is kind of just where I'll go on and tweak the details and stuff. So I'll usually, usually when I'm drawing, I'll work on the pose first, just to make sure that the pose is solid. And then from there, it kind of alternates whether I draw the hair or I draw the clothes next. Normally, I do actually save the hair for last, so the fact that I'm not on this one is, you know, different. But I figured it, Rebecca is going to have, like, her big poofy coat, and that's going to take up a lot of space anyway. So I figured, hey, um, let's make sure that the hair is right on this particular picture. But normally, I'll be drawing a character that's bald for, like, a good majority of the piece. Uh, that's just so the hair isn't distracting and I don't spend a really long time on it, you know? It's like, hey, if I spend you know, five hours on the hair and it looks great, but then everything else is garbo. There wasn't really any point in doing that. So I think, you know, order of priorities is important. It's saying, hey, uh, get the most important stuff down first and then worry about the small details. But you see here, I'm kind of getting the hair a little bit closer to where I like it. Still continuing to color with big shapes instead. I use the lasso tool a lot for this kind of stuff. Um, just mostly because that helps me see in shape. So I'm like, oh, hey, uh, let's work on our head, headphone ear things. <laughs> I think at this point is really when I was trying to just make it not look like Hatsune Miku. <laughs> um, still messing with the hair here. I'm trying to go for a balance, you know, um, and you see, I, I will be messing with the hair a lot more. So I'm just creating new layers, trying to tweak and move stuff. That's why I like having a bunch of things on different layers. You can actually see them to the side of what I'm doing. But if there's a thing I'm not 100% sure about, I'll either create a new layer or I'll duplicate a layer and mess with it. I just find that that's a little bit better than, um, you know, hoping that you don't run out of undo states. <laughs> uh, even though I have mine set really high, you can actually change the amount of undo states you have in Photoshop. I think mine is like 200 and that's still not enough. Um, that You know, that's good. Or you could be smart about it and save your computer a little bit of processing power by not doing that. But, but that's what I do. So I'll duplicate the layers. I'm kind of just messing with it, trying to see if the head rotation is... Um, is gonna work okay. This is actually where I start to deviate from my references a little bit. It, you know, it's it might work great for your reference, but if it's not a hundred percent what you want for your piece itself, that that's usually where I'll, where I'll start to deviate from it. So here I'm actually just starting to tweak and mess with things, just doing some perspective correction on the ear things, what <laughs> whatever those are called. We'll, we'll call them like cyberpunk headphones. She's listening to some really cool jams kind of just experimenting with how close to the original design I want her hair to be. So this is, um, for her actual design, her bangs kind of tucked back behind her ears. And I mean, I, I could do that, but I wanted to see if there was any other hairstyles I could do, which would be cooler. So taking a little bit of artistic liberty here, it, you know, it, I think it's good that you stick to, stick to the character design, but I think it's also a bit funner, you know, instead of just drawing fan art that's a hundred percent just carbon copy of whatever you're supposed to be making i think it's fun to kind of add your own little twist to it and for me i, I like drawing floofy hair i'd be all about drawing that floofy hair so i'm just kind of messing with it uh trying to see how much i can make it look like the character so you can still see the piece and be like hey that's not hatsune miku wait a minute that's rebecca <laughs> but um it is a little bit of a fine tune, a little bit of a balance on that. So I'm just trying to figure that out. And like I said, I usually do spend a really long time on the hair. So if most of this video is me just complaining about messing with the hair, you'll see why. I could cut it out, but I decided to actually leave it in just to kind of show you a lot of the back and forth that kind of goes on in my mind. And like I said, this is where coloring for the sketch is really helpful. Just because if this were 
you know, just in black and black and white lines, I might get lost in a sea of lines and be like, I think that looks okay. Um, but since I can actually see the hair, I know, oh, it would look like this if it were in color. So I have a little bit of a better understanding of how the actual space would work. So here, I, I know that the ponytails are pretty much tied down. They're solid. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll leave those. So I'll just line art those and get rid of the huge block of color. I usually don't do that for like the main hair, but you here you see me just free transforming it, trying to go back and forth and be like, hmm, what do I do with this? What do I do with this damn hair? Um, I do actually mess and tweak with my drawings for a really long time. I'm I know that some people are able to just jump straight into the painting and they're wizards and I have no idea how they do it. <laughs> but for me, I, I come from a, a background of drawing a lot of manga and anime style art. So, you know, for me, it's like, no guidelines are a must. I, I would rather have a really good plan and then break away from it. If I need to, than winging it. So I need, I know that this takes a little bit longer, but I'm not particularly in a rush. You know, I don't need to finish 50 pieces a week. I'm like, I got time. Uh, let's make it look nice. And like I was saying before, I, I want the sketch to be done right because I feel like if you have a, a messy foundation, it's going to be a lot harder to fix and you're not going to end up saving any time. You know, so it's like, oh, if if I try to skip the sketch and then, you know, go straight into painting and I have to fix a bunch of things later, I didn't actually end up saving any time. Whereas if I take a little bit longer at the beginning, make a better sketch and then take forever painting it. I feel like that's actually collectively faster. Sorry, I got the hiccups. I'm not used to talking for this long. Um, here I'm working on the hand. Uh, I kind of just free handed that one. Uh, the reason I decided to go with her hand down instead of just doing something crazy is I feel like it grounds the piece. It kind of reinforces the perspective. So, um, I know that you don't see any vanishing points or anything like that, but I promise I am drawing with perspective in mind. It's hard to explain just when you do it a lot, you, you kind of have a mental image of how that's supposed to go. So you're like, I, I know that my vanishing points will be like more or less here, here. So I'm kind of using the hand at a certain angle to reinforce it. So you're like, Oh yeah, the, the hand from this angle, Rebecca being at this angle, it kind of reinforces that you're looking from top down. Um, I know that I've been spending a long time talking about, oh, hey, this is how I make my sketches pretty. But um, that being said, I do still tweak it when I'm actually painting. So um, there there will be some times where I'm actually working on a piece, you know, like this. I try, to, I try to make the sketch as close as I can to the actual finished thing so there's the least amount of edits or revisions possible. But I still need to be flexible and know that, hey, this looked great as a sketch, but in a piece, it could look super messed up and not look right. So, um, I keep the drawing refined enough that it tells me exactly what I need to do for the painting process, but not so obnoxiously detailed that if I deviate from it, I'm like mad because I'm like, Oh, I, I spent all this time on it. And, and now I'm not even following my plan here. You'll see, I'm using more color sketching again, just, just for very geometric shapes kind of the reference of the drink it has a little snake on it it's got some ice cubes so i'm like eh, do those in color sketching just just for the volume you know it, it would be a little bit easier to do it that way so i kind of alternate if i feel like it's going to be easier with just the lines i'll sketch in that way if it's going to be in a solid block of color i'll do that instead um i'm pretty sure other people do this i, I know i didn't invent the technique but I, i'd like other people do this too right i'm not just insane <laughs> um here you'll see, all right, that's that's the base of the character. Now that I got the actual base in, this is where I actually start in on the coat. Since the coat is very poofy and there is already a lot of black lines going on, that's why I decided to continue in color sketching. Uh, kind of what I decide to do with that really depends on the piece. There's not a hard, fast rule. It's just, I think if you have, I think if you have more tools that, you can use and then just decide to use on a case by case is better than just doing the same thing every time. So I don't try to worry about, Oh, this is my process. This is always my process. I do this a hundred percent of the time. Yes. Every time, no variety. I think that every drawing is kind of a case by case deal. So, you know, the more art tools you have or the more art tricks or the more art hacks that you find out from TikTok, the the good ones, not the bad ones. Uh, but you know, the more of those that I have in a piece, the, the better it's like, Oh, 
I don't always use this one coloring method. I have like 10 coloring methods, but for this drawing in particular, I feel like this would be the best one. So here again with the coat, like I said, it's a very big poofy shape. So that's why I'm just using the color sketching. I'm adding in some green for like what the accents are going to be. And speaking of details that I omit, um, Rebecca has a, uh, tattoo patterns that I didn't even bother drawing. The reason I didn't draw them in is because I know I'm going to draw them in later. So this is a piece that I'm sketching knowing that I'm going to be painting it. So I know that, Hey, I'm going to color the skin. As soon as I color the skin, I'm going to draw the shape of that tattoo, copy and paste the skin that I had already colored, make a mask of the tattoo, and then just actually change the color on it. So, you know, instead of painting all of her skin, painting in the tattoo, repainting the skin again for the tattoo i'm like hey i have a better process this will be a bit more efficient so here in the sketch you'll see oh she doesn't have her neck tattoo she doesn't have her stomach or leg tattoos the reason for that and the reason i decided to not even bother with it is because i just know i'm going to add it in later um so this is usually with my sketching process it's just a balance of i need guidelines this just needs to be enough of a guideline that I'll know what I'm doing later because at some point in the painting, I will actually get rid of the guidelines themselves. Um, I feel like I should have mentioned at the beginning, I'm not actually going to be doing any coloring in this. I said it was a sketching and composition thing. So if you're hoping for the coloring, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's always next month. But um, just for this one, I felt like it would be good to explain my sketching process because I don't think I've ever done that. Usually it's in time lapse, but like the really fast ones for YouTube, <laughs> six to 10 minutes. How much can you really say in that time, you know, for a whole piece? You're like, oh, I did this and then I did this. Um, but here you'll kind of see I'm, I'm still just tweaking the character design a little bit. Going with the liquify tool, you see me going back and forth, trying to decide how much chin to give her. <laughs> Deciding the face is too big, so shrinking it down. Uh, you'll see I go back and forth a lot. Uh, the, the reason that I do that is because I'm actually looking at my other monitor for big picture, you know? Can look great up close, but for the big picture, um, does it look right? Because I know that I'm going to have some biases for the drawing because I'm the one making it. I'm like, oh, this this looks great and that looks cool. But I, you know, I'm working on a huge monitor, you know? <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, yeah, this, this looks great like this, but I need to remember that the majority of people are probably going to see this on Instagram or Twitter for like five seconds, if that, and they're going to be scrolling by. So I need to kind of keep that in mind. I need to make sure that this piece looks good from up close and from far away. So really big and really small. Um, so with that, you know, being said that that's kind of how I'll plan things out. You kind of got to plan it like, yes, this drawing is for me, but it's also going to be on the Internet. So try to take people into account. You know, they're going to look at the drawing once. It's just, uh, you know, how you're going to present the drawing and how people are going to see it is pretty much why composition is important, because I could have a really cool, dynamic picture of Rebecca and it's, you know, has a thousand different characters in it. But <laughs> If it's a little two inch by two inch thumbnails, um, you know, and on your social media feed, you're, you're not really going to understand the scale. So pretty much I'm just going back and forth between things, making sure that the big shapes read well, that the small shapes do too. Um, I know I'm going to be doing a lot more refining and detailing with the coat later, but I'm keeping that separate just because there's going to be separate versions of this drawing, uh, you know, one with a coat, one without a coat. So that's why I'm kind of just keeping those separate. Here you see me actually starting to add in those perspective lines because I'm like, oh, hey, um, you know, I thought that that would be a neat little thing to include. So like I said, as promised, there was perspective in this. It's actually three point because, like I said, it's a top down view. But here's a neat little trick for you. So I do color sketching. And if you were actually to try to paint over that, the blue would stay on top. So what I do for the actual base line art is, and I usually just name my line art base. So if you look over there at the corner, it's called base. I set that to multiply and then I drop in a black and white filter. So it makes it into grayscale. So that way I know at the beginning, oh, hey, like I can still read this. I don't need to go and reline art it. Um, that's just a neat little trick for if you ever decide to do color sketching. You, you Say you're drawing a mech or armor or something that needs very precise shape language. You're like, oh, I drew this in. 
now I got to go back and sketch it and do this and that. Uh, you actually don't need to. If you use a black and white filter, it'll just make a grayscale for you. And then you can paint on top of it. And because of the multiply, it'll just sit on top of there and it'll be chilling. You know, now that I shared that cool uh, 1000 IQ pro gamer move with you, you're probably wondering why I uh, colored her head pink. <laughs> um, now I'm actually starting to go in and add the masks. So for painting, what I'll do is I'll actually mask off different areas based on overlap, not what things are. So when I was working on stuff and it was cell shaded, I would make masks for everything. I would make a layer for the skin, a layer for the hair, a layer for the clothes, layer for the eyes, layer for the trees, the sky, the cloud. You know, I would, I would have a lot of layers. And with painting, the more layers you have, the more difficult it is to actually maneuver and change things around. If I have five different layers for her shoulder and I try moving one of the shoulder layers, it's going to mess it up. So what I try to do with my overlap in the masking is I try to make it in as few layers as possible. I'm actually using different tones of gray. So you can see here like, hey, her head is higher up than her body. But if you see the arm in the back, the one that's darker gray and then working on this, I'm like, those are behind the body. I'll blend them out later. Then this hand is in front of the other arms. And then, of course, there will be the hair in the back, which I'll get to here in a second. I hope that this makes sense with the overlapping, but pretty much what I do is I go based off of what is in front of what instead of, oh, this one's for the hair, this one's for the skin, this one's for the eyes, this is for this, this is for that, because if I try using the liquify tool and I'm only moving like the whites of the eyes and then I finish with that and the pupil still in the same spot because it was on a different layer, I'll be like, oh, so I know that I could merge them down, but I just find that this is easier and I'm using different colors here so you can actually see the overlap. I'll usually make the head a obnoxiously different color just so I don't get it mixed up with anything else. Like I, um, I'm adding contrast so you can see it here for this video, but I also, at least at the beginning, make all of the masks very different colors just so I can see the overlap in my head. I'm like, all right, this is in front of this. This is in front of that. That's behind this. So ooh, here's a good example of overlap. You'll see me do this. This is cool. A part of the ponytail is going in front of her head, but then as you see the hair strands go down, it starts to go behind her. So what I'll do here is like, oh, half of the ponytail will be this color because that's in front. But then me, being the little cheeky bastard that I am, go back and add a second layer behind it for the rest of the hair. You're like, whoa, 300 IQ move, right? I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that Skittles was smart, <laughs> but <laughs> you'll see. Oh, I add in part of it in the front, part of it in the back. Um, and oh, I guess I should mention this. Uh, I'm using the lasso tool for a lot of this. But if you find, hey, how's he making all of these complex selections like when when I can only make one? Uh, there's there's a little slider you can mess with up here. Click on that second button. That's a compound selection. That means you can add to it uh, infinitely as many times as you want. But if you hold the Alt key, you actually erase out of it. So that's really good for, you know, if you want to make selections, you'll be like, hey, I can add to it and take away from it without trying to use the lasso tool for everything it, it, it's just the it's just the pain in the butt <laughs> but yeah i i use the lasso tool a lot for my process you'll you'll find that out with you know later art videos um but yeah so you'll see here's the part where i'm trying to condense everything down now i'm making it all one layer color so you know it's it's the same color for everything here's that the layers are all still actually separated but now they're just uniform in color so i can be painting and not get distracted by things um and then I'm just getting rid of a couple of extra layers. Here's a fun little uh, shortcut that I do. I keep all the base colors on one folder and then I actually keep the line art outside of that folder so I can just toggle that on and off whenever I want and mess with the opacity as needed. But yep, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, maybe you learned a thing or two. Like I said, this is being provided because of Patreon. I will probably upload a few more of these to YouTube just so you get the gist of what I do. But if you want the real nitty gritty stuff, of course, a uh, Patreon link will be in this description. And of course, thanks to the patrons who made this possible. I'll just be putting them up here and I'll see you guys later. Bye.